Welcome to Bioscholar, where we explore the intricate processes that fuel life on Earth. Today, we're diving into the heart of photosynthesis, the Calvin cycle. This vital biochemical pathway takes place in the stroma of chloroplasts and is responsible for transforming carbon dioxide into glucose, the energy source that powers nearly all life. But how does this cycle actually work? What role do ATP and NADPH play? And why is Ruby's Co. called the most important enzyme on the planet? Stay with us as we unravel the mysteries behind one of the most fundamental processes in biology. Now that we've set the stage, let's start by understanding what the Calvin cycle is and where it takes place. The Calvin cycle, also known as the light independent reactions or the dark reactions, is the process by which plants convert atmospheric carbon dioxide into glucose using energy from ATP and NADPH, which are produced during the light dependent reactions. In simple terms, this cycle takes carbon dioxide from the air and, through a series of chemical steps, transforms it into glucose, a crucial energy source that sustains life on Earth. So, where does all of this happen? The Calvin cycle takes place in the stroma of the chloroplasts. This is the fluid-filled area that surrounds the thylakoid membranes, and it's here that the energy from the light reactions is put to work in carbon fixation and glucose production. Now, let's talk about the purpose of the Calvin cycle. At its core, the Calvin cycle is responsible for converting carbon dioxide into glucose, a vital energy source for plants and the organisms that consume them. It uses the energy stored in ATP and NADPH, which are produced in the light-dependent reactions, to power this transformation. The end result is glucose, a simple sugar that plants use for energy and growth, and that ultimately fuels almost all life on Earth. But how did we come to understand this process? The Calvin cycle is named after Melvin Calvin, an American scientist who, along with his colleagues, discovered this cycle in the late 1940s. Using a technique called carbon-14 labeling, Calvin and his team were able to trace the path of carbon atoms through the cycle, revealing the intricate steps of this essential process. Now, let's take a closer look at the three detailed phases of the Calvin cycle. Each phase plays a critical role in the conversion of carbon dioxide into glucose. The first phase is carbon fixation. In this step, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere is incorporated into an organic molecule. The enzyme Ruby's Co., which is actually the most abundant enzyme on Earth, catalyzes the reaction between carbon dioxide and a 5-carbon sugar called ribulose 1,5-bisphosphate. This reaction creates an unstable 6-carbon compound, which quickly breaks down into two molecules of 3-phosphoglycerate. This phase is crucial because it marks the point at which inorganic carbon is converted into a usable organic form. Next, we move into the reduction phase. Here, each molecule of 3-PGA is transformed into a molecule of glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate. This transformation happens in two steps. First, ATP from the light-dependent reactions provides the energy to convert 3-PGA into an intermediate form. Then, NADPH donates high-energy electrons to reduce the intermediate into G3P. It's important to note that for every three molecules of carbon dioxide that enter the cycle, six molecules of G3P are produced. However, only one G3P molecule is used to form glucose or other carbohydrates. The rest are recycled in the next phase. Finally, we reach the regeneration phase. In this step, Five of the six G3P molecules produced in the reduction phase are used to regenerate RUBP, the molecule needed to keep the cycle running. This regeneration process requires additional ATP, and it's key because without RUBP, the Calvin cycle wouldn't be able to continue fixing carbon. This intricate balancing act ensures that the cycle can keep operating efficiently and continue producing sugars. So, to summarize, in the carbon fixation phase, carbon dioxide is fixed into 3PGA. In the reduction phase, 3PGA is converted into G3P using ATP and NADPH. And in the regeneration phase, G3P is used to regenerate RUBP, 
ensuring that the cycle can continue. By the end of these three phases, the plant is able to generate the glucose it needs, using the energy stored in ATP and NADPH. Let's now take a closer look at the key players of the Calvin cycle, ATP, NADPH, and the enzyme Ruby's Co., all of which are essential for the process. Starting with ATP and NADPH, these molecules are produced during the light-dependent reactions and serve as the energy and electron donors for the Calvin cycle. In the reduction phase, ATP provides the energy to convert 3-phosphoglycerate into an intermediate compound, while NADPH donates high-energy electrons to form glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate ATP is also needed in the regeneration phase to regenerate RUBP, allowing the cycle to continue. Now for Ruby's Co., the most abundant enzyme on Earth. It catalyzes the first step of the Calvin cycle, carbon fixation, by facilitating the reaction between carbon dioxide and RUBP to form 3PGA. Despite being somewhat slow and prone to binding with oxygen in a process called photorespiration, Ruby's Co. is vital for capturing carbon dioxide and initiating the production of organic molecules. So, ATP and NADPH power the Calvin cycle, while Ruby's Co. ensures that carbon dioxide is fixed, making this entire process possible. In the Calvin cycle, energy inputs and outputs are vital for its function. The primary inputs are ATP and NADPH, produced during the light-dependent reactions. ATP provides energy for converting 3-phosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate while NADPH donates high-energy electrons for this reduction. ATP is also used in the regeneration phase to convert G3P back into RUBP. The main output is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. For every three carbon dioxide molecules fixed, one G3P is produced, which can be used to synthesize glucose. The remaining G3P molecules are recycled to regenerate RUBP allowing the cycle to continue. So, ATP and NADPH power the Calvin cycle, while G3P serves as a crucial building block for carbohydrates. Now, let's explore the different pathways associated with carbon fixation, C3, C4, and CAM pathways. The C3 pathway is the most common form of photosynthesis where carbon dioxide is fixed directly into 3-phosphoglycerate via the Calvin cycle. This pathway is efficient in cool, moist climates but can be less effective in hot, dry conditions due to photorespiration. In contrast, the C4 pathway is an adaptation found in some plants, such as maize and sugarcane. In this pathway, carbon dioxide is initially fixed into a 4-carbon compound which is then converted into malate and transported to specialized bundle sheath cells where it enters the Calvin cycle. This adaptation minimizes photorespiration and allows these plants to thrive in high temperatures and low water availability. Lastly, the CAM pathway, or crassulation acid metabolism, is found in succulents like cacti. These plants open their stomata at night to take in carbon dioxide, which is fixed into a 4-carbon acid and stored until daylight. During the day, the stomata close to conserve water, and the stored carbon dioxide is released for use in the Calvin cycle. This strategy is particularly beneficial in arid environments. The significance of the Calvin cycle cannot be overstated. It plays a central role in photosynthesis, allowing plants to convert inorganic carbon dioxide into organic compounds, which are essential for life on Earth. The sugars produced during the Calvin cycle not only serve as energy sources for plants, but also form the basis of the food chain for other organisms, including humans. Additionally, the cycle helps regulate atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, making it vital for maintaining the planet's climate balance. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of the Calvin cycle. Be sure to subscribe to Bioscholar for more engaging insights into the fascinating world of biology.